get uh, some nice little additions. And Jinnan, as part of uh, his work over here, was, uh, with some blessing, photographing a lot of our activities. And so he's just out of interest before I just wrap up and take a minute. Uh, Jinnan, we'd like to show your, your video. <laughs> in study, we're, we're trying to look at a lot of the uh, new ways to deliver results, and a lot of this has to do with uh, very short presentations, YouTube presentations, two-minute kind of presentations. You've probably seen a lot of the, um, the various institutes that are giving very short courses. So we're looking to package a lot of these talks, that's why we're videoing a lot of this today. We're looking at packaging a lot of our technology into something like two minute to five minute segments to post and deliver to deliver that all over the world. Are you going to do a short course tweet? Basically that's it. Two minute geophysics. So arthrorhombic anisotropy, can we do it? Yeah, an elevator. <laughs> Great, so we just uh, I'd like to take the last minute or two and then we'll break and, and cross, cross the way to our, uh, our Dobrin lecture where we're very happy to feature Dr. David Monk. Uh, but just to wrap up, so once again to repeat where we are, our goal is of course to make major contributions of uh, many different kinds to exploration geophysics. Uh, we are trying to use the full wave field and mainly our, most of our targets well, in fact, I think all of our targets are some kind of organic material, all the way from burials to deeper burials. Uh, and we're doing that really in conjunction with our, with our communities here. Once again, we're trying to extend all these areas, the, the kinds of data that we acquire, 
all the way from the lab, numerical models, physical modeling, uh, to field work. Use the most advanced analysis that we can, processing and interpretation, and then work all of that into very practical cases <coughs> to try to do something useful uh, in the uh, month to year kinds of time frame, as well as longer term. The case histories to try to apply this as soon as we can. Uh, there are a lot of different areas. Uh, we're very excited about a lot of things that are happening in acquisition, how we how we measure motion, and I think we're going to hear a lot more about that in the next uh, next hour or so. Here are two of the ones that, uh, that we're, we're working on right now, but uh, really exciting work in, in the acquisition world. Uh, certainly in taking where we put these, this is something we didn't get to discuss, but Suleiman Koskin, who just uh, defended and uh, went back to Turkey, he's now happily working with his new family and his new job in Istanbul. But uh, we've been modeling working with Pierce Junction, and the way that people are really designing surveys right now is to do 2D or full 3D elastic forward modeling, take all that data, put that data into an RTM migration, and experiment with the uh, decimations in the migration to determine the survey parameters. And this is a beautiful thing. It requires enormous computing power. And we did that in 2D and 3D, uh, for example, in Pierce Junction. We hope sometime to do a 3D survey over Pierce Junction. And that's, that's our goal. But um, in decimating this data after going forward, 3D, finite difference modeling, and then RTM migration. This is from a paradigm, all paradigms, computers over Christmas to do the migrations. You can see limiting offset ranges, 3,000, 6,000, and what can you get away with? And so this is really current uh, survey design using full modeling and full pre-stack migrations. And a really beautiful way to go about uh, survey design. So we'll continue on with that work. Uh, our inversions, we like to use multi-component, and very nice ways to do time lapse is to assume that we have variable data sets, have full AVO elastic expression of those, try to put that all into some kind of system of equations, uh, before and after, have the before terms, the, the changes in terms, and solve time-lapse multi-component as one big inverse problem. And so that's really where we're going a lot of the process and again, another um, beautiful technique. And we've done some of that work with Ayato Kato and, and uh, in the Canadian oil sands. So that's the place where we're going. We will want to very much thank all the companies who are supporting this work or have supported this work, we're, uh, we're trying to use the most advanced techniques, push all these techniques, extend them to make highly impacting results that are useful to our applied community. And so thank you for all the uh, groups who support us because without, uh, clearly without the support, we're gonna be working on a seamount somewhere and, uh, and we really do want to do stuff that's impacting city and, uh, and our industry. So thank you to these folks who are helping us out. Uh, I want to mention again that we have a big program. We have a ton of enthusiastic students and staff. Our ambitions are very big. We're trying to, uh, to run one of the top several programs in applied geophysics in the world, and we're going to ask for your, for your help. We really want the collaboration. We need the support. And so uh, please consider uh, joining us. And with that, uh, let us know what's useful to you. We're always trying to find out, speak to the people we're working with. Where do you want to work? What, what are the needs? What are the demands? How can we help? So uh, please fill out our little forms. We'll, get, uh, we'll listen to them. We put them all together and tabulate and correlate, and we'll try to understand what are the uh, most pressing demands and interesting problems. And so we'd like to be driven by that. And with that, I will wrap it up. We're just at about 25 after 5. Our reception starts at 5.30. So uh, grab the lights. Thank you, Lee. Just want to thank all the uh, our AGL folks uh, for everything they've done. Once again, thank you to all the people here who've been